Welcome to High Tech Farmer. My name is Matthias and today I'm going to be giving you guys a tour inside our farm shop. So let's head on in. Let's see what we got. First thing we got to do, kick the lights on. And here we are. Before we get walking around the entirety of the shop and I show you guys some of the cool things that we did inside our farm shop, I want to show you my number one favorite thing in our farm shop. And as simple as it is, it's this washing sink right here. Because many times we come in from outside, whether power washing equipment, working out in the field and you get your hands dirty and you want to wash them, rather than having to walk back to the bathroom, we put a working sink right here. That way you can wash off your hands and just hop right back on outside or get in the truck or a tractor. It's really nice and handy to have right inside the door and that's my favorite thing. Now I'll show you guys my least favorite part of the shop. That is this right here, this wall. That's because our shop is 80 feet long, 60 feet wide, and my least favorite part is that it is not bigger. When we built the shop in 2009, we thought 80 by 60 covered all of our needs for the equipment we wanted to put in here, but as our farm's grown, technology's changed, I wish our shop was a little bit bigger. I don't think anyone that's ever built a shop, let alone any shed, has ever, after the construction's done, said, man, I built it too big. But let me show you guys around our 80 by 60 shop, starting up here from the door we came in. Coming in on the south side of the building, we have our two large overhead doors, a 14 foot wide door and a 30 foot wide door. This one's especially nice when we wanna bring the combine in or the planter in overnight. And our 14 foot door, we usually just bring in some trucks or trailers that we were using and running around with on the farm. I can say I'm glad we chose a roll up door over a hydraulic door. That was a decision we made when we built the shop just because our yard's kind of condensed. We didn't want to have problems with the door swinging up and hitting machinery that we had parked out front. And it seems like our overhead door that we have is served us well. A thing I really like about the overhead doors is we have these windows here. That way when you're working in the shop and you think you hear a vehicle that's either pulling into the yard or pulling in up front to the shop, you can look through these windows to see rather than having to jump outside the door every time. So that's one nice feature that I like and our insulated door is these windows. In the other corner of the building, we have our other walk-in door opposite the sink where we came in. And that one faces the rest of the main yard, so that one gets used 99% of the time. And then we have all of our hanging shelves for, as you saw, our brooms, mops, anything we use inside the shed, in addition to extension cords, hoses. I'm big on organization. I believe that as long as there's nothing on the floor, setting down when you come back into the shed and you don't see something on the floor, you're less likely to drop a tool or a bucket on the floor and more likely to put it away. So I'm big on trying to get stuff off the floor, get more usable space. So as we walk around the shop, you'll see some of those different things that I've implemented to try to get stuff off the floor and have a home for things. Moving along farther, we have all of our seed treating equipment. So this stuff is what we use to treat all of our soybean seeds. And this stays in the shop all season long, all year long, because most of it's electronic and it can get cold, but it can't get freezing cold like it does in some of our cold storage buildings. So this seed treating equipment we keep in here and most of it's actually hardwired or installed to the wall and to the floor. And if you're wondering how this building is heated and cooled as it stays between 55 and 65 degrees all season long, is that's through geothermal heat. But we'll talk more on that later. Moving along, in this corner we have all of our bulk oil. Since we do 90% of our oil changes in the shop, it's nice to have all of our bulk oil in one spot, but rather than having to tote it all around in these five gallon jugs, what we did is we put on this handy dandy reel. So that way when you gotta go to a piece of farm equipment, you can just pull the reel out and then you just top everything off and it saves a lot of hassle, saves you a lot of time, and there's very little cleanup when you use this handy dandy gun and reel. One thing to point out, especially here on this back wall, is if you see we have this piece of trim here three feet up from the floor. And if you're wondering why we have that, because the building is so tall and these tin pieces could have been 21 feet tall, rather than if somebody drives into this wall with a tractor or a lawnmower or hits it with a little pallet, rather than having to replace the whole sheet of tin, most of the time, whatever you hit is only on the bottom three feet. That way for 15, 20 bucks, you can just get a new little small piece, fix it up, and not have to replace a two, $300 full sheet of tin. 
Moving along our back wall now, we're gonna go into our supply room slash bathroom. But before we do, and somebody asked in the comments, what brand building is that? Here's the logo, somebody down in the comments, let everybody know, and I'll pin the comment to the top. Let's head on in. Here is the back supply room and bathroom. As you can tell, we have our air compressor, water softener, water heater, all in this room. Main reason, we can shut the door, and since this stuff makes a lot of noise when we're working in the shop or trying to talk to somebody on the phone or somebody that's here, you're not hearing the air compressor run all day, so it's nice to have this stuff in a closed room on its own. And in here we have all of the geothermal hookups. These are basically the lines that they have running underneath all the concrete that supply heat and cool into the building. And there's the pump in addition to all of our supplies that we need on the farm. As much as possible, we like to keep all of our supplies, filters, aerosol cans, everything here because whether it's me, mom, dad, brother, whoever that's looking for something, whether it be a grease can, 1030 oil, um, spray paint, this is where we like to keep everything. That way everyone knows where to look. So here's all of our supplies and probably over $2,000 worth of filters and everything that's on these shelves. Moving on from the supply room, we're now moving over to the bench where we keep all of our tools. But before the bench, we have all of our organizers for our nuts, bolts, washers, and screws in what I would consider a fairly organized fashion. In these blue bolt bins, we have all of our nuts organized by size from quarter inch to seven eighths, as well as bolts that are organized by length. Some other things we have organized here are our hex keys, roll pins, light bulbs, set screws, machine screws, all of our washers, spacers, everything neatly organized right here. Our farm hasn't always been this organized when it comes to nuts, bolts, screws, washers, and all the other hardware that's behind me. We used to just have about 15 five gallon pails like this one here on the floor. And each one, one would say bolts, one would say screws, another one would say washers. And anytime you try looking for something you need, you'd come into the five gallon pail, dig through, a lot of times not find what you need, go to town, buy it. Well, during COVID of 2020, I was home from college, looking for a project, something to do. So I dumped out all those five gallon pails, started organizing, bought up a bunch of organizers, and here are the results. Unfortunately, it took me a lot longer than just three weeks, but I got it done just this past summer. And rather than having to drive back and forth to town, now we're able to quickly see and visually look for all the things and pieces that we might be trying to find since they're all labeled and organized cleanly. I wish I knew all the time I had invested in all this organization and cleaning up of this hardware was gonna be a good return on my time, but there's no great way to know, but I would say the price on some of these small things that I have in these bins has doubled, if not tripled since prior to COVID. So I'm gonna say the juice was worth the squeeze. Moving on to our 24 foot long steel top workbench. One thing I like about this is all of the drawers. That way we're able to put all of our tools away at night and they all have a home rather than setting them out on top of the bench or trying to hang them up. I think it looks a lot cleaner this way and this workbench works good because we're able to label where everything goes. I'm a big believer that all of our tools should have a home because if you think of it kind of like a kitchen, everyone has a silverware drawer. That way everyone knows that this is where the silverware goes. Similar idea here in the shop. We have a screwdriver drawer. That way, whether whoever comes to the farm, they look, they see screwdrivers, that's the drawer where all the screwdrivers belong. On the floor here by the workbench, we have some of these rubber mats that we picked up from Menards. These are nice because sometimes if you're really working on something for quite a few hours, you hate to stand on concrete forever. So we got some rubber mats here that make it easier and more comfortable to stand on. And now we've made it all the way around the shop and ended up back at the sink. But now we're gonna head up the stairs to the top of the loft. That way we can show you guys some of our storage stuff up here that we keep because it's nice to have things in a heated building like chemicals and electrical equipment. So that's what we store up here in the loft. Here's a look at the loft. It's nice to have all these storage racks and shelves up here because rather than trying to set stuff down at the main level or putting up shelves, in other spots of the shop. It's nice to have this stuff off the ground because most of the stuff we only use once a year. 
So it's nice to have this loft and it's built over our workbench area down there. Another thing you might have noticed as we were going around the shop is all of the conduit that we have hanging on the wall. Two of them are electrical, one of them is for the air compressor as we have outlets for the air compressor every 10 feet. And some people I know like to put their electrical conduit underneath the concrete. That way it looks cleaner inside the shop. But for us, when we built it, one thing we were thinking of is if we ever want to add an outlet, if something ever goes wrong with a line, we want to be able to service it. So we ran all the conduit on the outside of the steel. And there you guys have it. High Tech Farmer Farm Shop Tour. If you have any questions about the tour, anything you saw in our shop, you wanted more information about, throw that down below in the comments. I'll respond to you guys. More importantly, we're gonna get started on the 560 here next week. So if you're not subscribed and you didn't see what happened to this tractor in the rollover, check out this video here. But otherwise, hit subscribe. We're gonna get this thing fixed up, get it running, use it again next season. But thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.